most tank armor was quite thin at the beginning of World War II. As a result, most countries considered anti-tank guns with calibers of 2 inches or less to be sufficient. The 37mm was used by the US and Germans, the 2-pounder by the British, and the 45mm by the Russians. The tanks swiftly developed armor that was impervious to these small rounds. As the war progressed, all powers advanced through a series of conventional anti-tank guns. The United States went from 37 to 57 mm. The Germans adopted the 50 mm, whereas the British adopted the 6-pounder, which is likewise roughly 57 mm. On medium tanks, guns with a caliber of 75 mm or 3-inch became the norm. The 3-inch was chosen, because all forces had competent AT weapons in the 75-76mm, to 76 mm, or 3-inch caliber range, and they provided sufficient power with the lightest gun and ammunition. However, some of them were low-velocity guns, while others were medium-velocity, and still others were high-velocity guns. When a gun is described as 75mm L40, it means the barrel is 40 times the caliber, or 3,000 mm long. The longer the barrel, the higher the velocity and thus the penetration power. Low velocity guns are good for infantry support, since the shell usually has to endure lower forces, and thus the shell casing can be more thin and you get more high explosive in a shell for a given caliber, which means a bigger bang when it hits the target. High-velocity guns are designed to destroy other tanks, and are therefore rarely used for infantry support. Medium-velocity ones were a good compromise, that could be used for both roles. Another significant difference between the guns was the size of the cartridge. A bigger cartridge with more propellant makes the shell move faster, but it costs more and takes up more space in the tank, so you can keep fewer. It's not always true that bigger is better. The Panzer IV was Germany's heavy tank design when World War II began. It was designed for infantry support rather than tank versus tank warfare, and was equipped with a short-barreled 75mm gun. The short-barreled gun was only modestly effective in tank engagements. In France in 1940, the Germans had already started using their powerful 88mm flak guns, in a direct fire roll against ground targets such as enemy tanks. The T-34 was first encountered when Germany invaded the Soviet Union in June 1941. It came with a 76mm F-34 gun with a longer barrel, among many other features. The F-34 has decent armor-piercing and high-explosive capability. It could penetrate 60mm of armor at 1,000m with APCR rounds, and 77mm with HEAT rounds. Because the Red Army relied heavily on tanks to support troops, the 76mm was an excellent choice. As a result of this, as well as the requirement to battle bigger British tanks encountered in North Africa, the Germans fitted a long-barreled 75mm cannon on Panzer IVs. They also upgraded their mobile assault gun, the Sturmgeschütz III. Both vehicles were upgunned to a 75mm KWK-40, L-48 gun, with superior anti-tank performance. It was accurate had an excellent gun sight with good ranging capabilities, and it had no trouble punching through T-34s at 2,000 meters with armor-piercing ammunition, with 92 millimeters penetration. The 75 millimeter cannon on the M4 Sherman was a good weapon, with effective HE and reasonable anti-tank performance, against tanks in the Sherman's own weight category of 30 tons. However, the 75mm Sherman was no match for the German big cats, the Panthers and Tigers. 
But U.S. forces only saw Tiger tanks in a handful of engagements in Northern Europe. Panther tanks were encountered far more frequently. The Sherman UP gunned with the 76mm was fairly efficient against most German tanks, with its improved ergonomics and rate of fire, more than compensating for its thinner armor and inferior penetrative capabilities. The 76mm gun is an improvement on the 75mm in two key areas, hit probability and penetration. However, the 76mm is not as good as the 75mm, in terms of rate of fire and HE shell for infantry support. With the arrival of the 76mm gun, the Sherman was able to acquire an advantage in tank versus tank warfare against Panzer IVs and Stugs, as well as fight German big cats on roughly equal terms at ranges below 1,000 meters. A mixed bag of 75mm and 76mm Shermans gave a well-balanced and effective tank force for most jobs. The British upgraded the Sherman with a more powerful 3-inch, 76.2mm caliber, 17-pounder anti-tank gun, and named it Sherman Firefly. The 17-pounder had far superior armor penetration, compared to the 76mm used on US tanks. This enabled it to engage heavier German tanks more effectively, and at theoretically longer ranges. The 17-pounder's APCBC ammunition, was capable of penetrating up to 163 mm of homogeneous steel armor at 500 meters. On paper, its APDS ammunition could penetrate 256 mm of armor at 500 meters, and 233 mm of armor at 1000 meters, which would destroy the armor of practically every German armored fighting vehicle at any range. The Firefly's problem was that it was ultimately a stopgap vehicle which meant that it had to make a lot of design compromises. Because the 17-pounder was such a large gun, they actually had to modify the gun breech so it would fit, and the turret turned out to be quite cramped. As a result of its poor ergonomics, the Firefly was extremely slow to fire and frequently inaccurate. Despite its greater anti-tank capabilities, the 17-pounder lacked an effective high-explosive shell, making it inferior to the standard Sherman 75mm gun against soft targets, such as infantry, buildings and lightly armored vehicles. A good HE shell for the gun only became available in late 1944, and even then it was not as potent as the standard Sherman 75mm HE shell. The 75mm KWK 42L70, installed in the Panther tank, was by far the greatest 75mm gun fielded in any tank during World War II. High velocity combined with superior sights, made it highly accurate, and this 70 caliber long gun only weighed 1000 kg. Its ordinary armor-piercing round, the Panzer Grenade 3942, had a velocity of 995 meters per second, and could penetrate up to 138 millimeters of rolled homogeneous steel at 100 meters given a 30 degree slope, and it was capable of penetrating the front of both the T-34 and the M-4, at distances up to 3,000 meters. The Panzer Grenade 4042, its APCR shell, had a velocity of 1,130 meters per second, and could penetrate 194 millimeters of rolled homogeneous steel, at a distance of 100 meters on a 30 degree slope. Only the 17 pounder anti-tank gun, could achieve more penetration with the newly designed APDS cartridge, which had up to 275 millimeters of penetration. However, beyond 500 meters, the 17 pounder was quite inaccurate. There is a popular misconception that the M3 gun on the standard M4 Sherman, fired a better HE round. With 680 grams of high explosive filler, the Sherman's M48 shell was a very good HE round for a 75mm gun, with blast energy of 2845 kJ. The Panther's high explosive shell, the Sprang Granate 42, contained 690 grams, slightly more explosive than the Sherman's M48 shell, 
with 2,887 kilojoules of blast, and was equally effective. However, the long 75mm gun's lethal anti-armor performance came at a cost, as the very long gun was a handicap in close country or urban terrain. In short, the Panther's gun was fantastic at blowing up T-34s 2 kilometers away on open step, but it was not a very good choice for supporting infantry clearing a village. The fact that the 75mm KWKL-70 was so good, that the French copied it. They employed a slightly shortened version of the gun on the AMX-1375, which was used to upgrade Israel's M4 Shermans in 1951, giving birth to the M50 Super Sherman. If you have enjoyed the video, please subscribe and support the channel for more. Many thanks for watching.